I am sweating. Look at that. I'm covered in sweat. I am walking a 30 kilo backpack. Look at that behind me here. Full of food. Full of rice, flour, kumaras, um, carrots, things that keep. I'm walking it on a track, thank God for that, through the jungle here in Brazil. It's unbelievably hot. It's 30 degrees. I'm just sweating my ass off. unbelievably hot it's 30 degrees i'm just sweating my ass off i'm panting the the track goes up and down and up and down and up and down how much can you sweat i must have lost liters of liquid and just now i stood still for a minute and there was a bright blue big butterfly peter always calls them flutterby and I was thinking, you know, all of life is actually a flutter by. Before you know it, life has fluttered by. Goes so quick, doesn't it? Life is so fragile, just that, like that big blue butterfly. It's so beautiful, but I have to overcome the idea of sweat is no good. It is good. The more I sweat, the closer I am to Peter in the tent and <laughs> the sea.
Hi Peter, what are you doing? Well I'm here in Brazil and I'm looking at what the mine didn't make. These ones are green. That's that. Oh, it's only small, but very tasty, no doubt. Nice. <laughs> we decided to live on a beach in Brazil without road access, so we have to walk one hour and 15 minutes through the jungle or take a boat. So I'm walking today and I'm taking food up and it's another resupply day. And I realize there's actually two types of people. The first one sees everything like this as pure suffering. It's just hellish. And another one like me sees it as training. So this for me is just good training. I'm getting fitter and I'm getting stronger and suffering doesn't exist for me. I think every country got undervalued food and here in Brazil it's jackfruit. The locals don't value it. It's basically free and you can make like 100 different recipes with it. So here we go. Here's your jackfruit. Wild ass. <laughs> Here we go. A free jackfruit. This is a jackfruit. It's not ripe yet, but maybe in a few days. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> this is a jackfruit and it grows everywhere in Brazil, even in the middle of the city in Rio de Janeiro. So knowing us, of course, we go up there and we find them because this is good food. It's a fruit. It's a massive fruit. It's heavy too. It's probably five kilos this thing so we just cut it open and what you find is this and this is your part you eat really nice absolutely fantastic If the jackfruit is unripe the solution is to just boil it and it becomes like stewed apple so this is another one of my recipes options are just endless <laughs> hey 
another one of my recipes is empanadas with jackfruit. So here is a cooked jackfruit. I put it in here. And I'll just make it like a pancake wrap sort of a thing. A little water around the edges. And then you just roll it up and fry it in a pan. Look at this. That's it. And fry it. nearly died I went head over feet over head over feet like in a washing machine I thought I'm gonna drown I'm never gonna see daylight again but luckily I got up again and I went straight back in because Peter always says if you don't go straight back in you have fear forever so that's what I did what a wow it's hard on every level, but at least I survived. <laughs> well, another day of failure for me as a surfer. It's really hard. To be a beginner is really hard. It's not nice. Actually, if you think about it, only as kids we are used to being a beginner. As an adult, we not often start from scratch. But I must say it's really humbling to know absolutely nothing, to make many mistakes and to learn really slowly. <laughs> but I'm also learning a lot from the sea. When those big waves come, I'm thinking, shit, I'm gonna die. <laughs> but I'm learning to relax and surrender. Relax and surrender. There's a snake, it's bright green, fantastic, very nice to see, but I do recall that this particular one is quite poisonous. We're on the trail. It's getting a bit dark now. I think the trail is somewhere over there. Mm. It's rather kind of jungly like. There's a water here. Well, we decided today to walk up a mountain, 1,000 meters, 3,000 feet. Uh, everyone is um, warning us for snakes. It does look a bit snaky here. Could be snakes anywhere. <laughs> Tree snakes, <laughs> big spiders we've seen. And right now we're a bit lost. We don't know what to do now. <laughs> Got all day to figure our way out.
look at these spikes. You wouldn't want to walk into them. The whole jungle is full of them. <laughs> if it's not spikes, it's spiders or snakes. And make sure we never get lost, <laughs> like us now. All right, we're gonna backtrack now. <laughs> So really outside my comfort zone, not physically, but just knowing that there are snakes and spiders and all. We're just going to backtrack. It's easy, relatively, to see our trail. Um, so far, so good. We've done 20 meters. Pretty good. Another 800 to go. <laughs> We've got the Gaia on GPS, but um, it's not picking up signal, so we can't see where we are. And that's when we got into the gully and not the spur, because we thought the path was on the spur. Not so. That's why we got lost. <laughs> well, it's raining now, but I guess it doesn't matter. We're already wet anyway. Now well, let's go back to that spur. It's much easier than the gully. Thank God I'm not alone. I'm with Sean. How do you feel, Sean, being lost? Not really in danger because we we're not panicking. We can still hear the river. We have a feeling of the terrain. So we're just heading back. What do you think about the snakes? Mm, I think they're wondering what we're doing up here. <laughs> How about those tracks that we followed? There weren't any human tracks. Those were yeah. maybe panther tracks. Yeah, could be ant eaters or no idea. What do you find the biggest Brazil. nuisance here? The the spiky plants everywhere. They've got like four or five different models. <laughs> do you like the jungle? <laughs> no. <laughs> back on the trail. Well, the lesson learned is if you're off trail, you really backtrack immediately. Do not try to cut through the jungle. That's just going from the fry pan into the fire. <laughs> this is where we wanted to climb to, but if we had come to the top, we would not have seen anything because of the cloud. Well, we made it home, but now we're covered in ticks, tiny, tiny ticks. I already took off 20, just squashed them between my nails, but they're this tiny. Can you see it? here this is how tiny they are amazing eh? manioc contains cyanide so you have to soak it first and then boil it for a long time until it's so soft you can put a fork in it like this this is what the manioc looks like when it's cooked. Here we have two bottles of water. God knows where this water comes from. Somewhere out from the jungle there. Could be good to drink. Might not be. So, um, ever since we left New Zealand, where the water is super good up in the high mountains, we are a little bit more careful with filtering the water. So, what I bought is a SteriPen. This is a SteriPen. You just put it in the water for one minute, and then at the end, it's supposedly good to drink. I made a mistake. I've got one with batteries, but you can also buy one with a USB entrance. 
and you can charge it on your solar panel. So if I buy it again, I will buy the one with a USB. Not my other one. Here's my life straw. This is perfect for drinking. Very good, very handy. And um, you get a good bottle at the same time. But if you want to soak your muesli, you need a stereo pen. So there you go. Greetings from Brazil. really hard is all the mold on everything. I've got mold on the tent now and mold on my pack. And this is my only pack. <laughs> uh, it, I just get wet with sweat and then it doesn't dry out quick enough and then it all get mold. Uh, I've tried vinegar, I've tried washing it, I've tried putting it in the sun, but it doesn't really help. So this is such a disadvantage of the tropics. Look at this, Natureza Selvagem. I found my own book in the bookshop in Parachi. So here we are, signing the books. Mm -hmm. 